Okay, good evening, and welcome to the December 9th, 2014 Town Board Meeting for the Town of Austin. Please stand for the pledge. Madam Clerk. Council Member Jeffrey. Present. Council Member Harder. Present. Council Member Wilshire. Present. Council Member Blaha. Present. And Supervisor Donnelly. Present. Uh, this evening we have a public hearing in the matter of the 2015 tentative budget. Is there anyone who has come to discuss this? Chairman. Good evening, uh, board members. Um, I'm Michael G. O'Connor. I am the superintendent of highways for the town of Arsene. And uh, <clears throat> I'm here to speak on the, basically um, two issues that are contained in the budget. Uh, and uh, when I appealed to the board, uh, Councilman Blaha wasn't there at the session that I talked to the board members. Will you uh, filled in on my comments or what I said to the board members that were there in my uh, request? Are you done with your your question? Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes. In fact, I was. Uh, thank you for asking. I was uh, apprised of. Uh, well, first of all, having reviewed the budget, I was aware of, of the uh, the facts and figures. Discussed it with the board before your meeting, and. Uh, made some preliminary comments to the board uh, was and was uh, immediately on my return from uh, I think I was out of town uh, did, um, did follow up and, and make sure I was surprised of the events of that meeting so thank you for asking well the, the one thing that I really want to address is of course the restitution of my salary uh, they've been indicated to me by the supervisor there is movement in that and I appreciate that, but at the same time, I want to put on record that uh, I'm asking for the restitution of my salary because on an ongoing basis, should I retire uh, in three years, if it would be my first planned opportunity to do so, um, I will retire with um, a, a little hole in the pension because this setback is going to cause that. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of that. Suffice to trust me that it will happen that way because that's the way it works. And so the, um, the harm that was done to me this year will perpetuate itself forever in my retirement if my salary is not put back to where it was. And uh, I'm asking that it be returned because it would be an ongoing reduction for me forever. The second issue that I wish to bring forth to you is that the, uh, with the planned retirement of my office manager, the town board has decided to make this position part-time. Now I do understand that this has happened in other communities. I mean, you're not alone in seeking out to do this. Uh, in other communities where they've done it, they've come up with other arrangements. They've brought somebody in who not only did the highway work, but did uh, various other duties at the town, whether it's deputy clerk, did work, work for the work for the uh, building department, or whatever, but the seat was somebody was sitting in the seat all day long. Uh, the structure of our town doesn't make that practical. Nobody can come over there and sit in the seat when whoever is in that position when it becomes part-time. And this, I believe I've documented it enough to indicate to you that this is a full-time job. There is a lot of work there and it's ongoing every day. Um, and that I really wish to have you reconsider <coughs> at this position the in fact recognized as a full-time position and that the structure and duties of the highway department 
for that person in that position was enumerated in my uh, report to you and that I am asking for that to be uh, reversed and continued as a full-time position. The rest of the items in the budget, I've given all you copies and hope that you will monitor the budget, realize those lines that I pointed out to you to have to be checked and uh, it's hard to live with, but you know, on the whole the budget, it is what it is. But those two items are significant. And I'm here to raise my voice to you officially uh, in the, the call for that. I thank the board for its time this evening. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. I just want to clarify something. The town <clears throat> board didn't make any decision. This is Madam Supervisor's tentative budget. So in terms of decision making, the town board has not decided anything yet. Well, the town board will vote tonight on the budget, so um, everyone will have their say at that time. So, thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you all, and happy holidays to everybody. Same to you. Thank you. So, anyone else? Good evening. My name is Gloria Freed. I'm the Receiver of taxes in the town of Ossining. I live at 22 Ryder Road. And I would like to first uh, ask a question. Um, we made presentations before three board members and the supervisors in, in, in the supervisor in November. Uh, Mr. Blah, I believe uh, you were not able to be there. But that presentation was not made um, in public, and it was not made with a camera. And so the public did not have an opportunity to hear those presentations. And then two weeks ago, we had another um, presentation. Was that, public was that presentation read into the minutes for this meeting, or is this the official public hearing? What happened, as, as uh, we told everyone at the work session last week, um, by the way, the, um, while they are open meetings when we have departmental um, budget meetings, they, are never te they have never been televised. So, uh, But uh, as far as uh, the, um, the public hearing that we had two weeks, this is, this is a second public hearing. They were put into the minutes just like whatever you said was put into the minutes. And what happened was everyone did everything right. You know, there was a lot of people saying we didn't put it on the web page right or we didn't uh, advertise it on the sign. But what happened is the Journal News, and I was going to read this in a statement at, after the public hearing, but I'll say it now. The Journal News did never published it. We've been having trouble with the Journal News, and one of the items on our work session next week is going to be decide what newspaper to use as our le to put our legal notices in. If the Journal News isn't going to follow through on things, then we have, to be, uh, we have to be very careful with that. So we found it was in the best interest to have a second public hearing, but the first public hearing stands as it was, it was um, well, said. Actually, if it was not duly noted, then it really doesn't qualify as the official public hearing, although it was a meeting held in public. Right. And okay. so since that is the case. I don't, I don't agree with that. Uh, and you know what? It, it's, it was in public. It's on the record. Everything was taped. Everything is, was part of it. We're doing it tonight, too, uh, to just to make sure that we cover all the bases. And um, so. It is, it's on YouTube, right? Yeah, it's, on, it's on everything. It it's on video. It's, it's on TV. It's on everything. Those, yeah. those comments were not struck or not right. not right. revealed. I mean, the, the, the whole meeting was... <coughs> Um, publish just in case that's a question no uh, but I do feel that it's very important to have uh, these comments in the public record of the public hearing the official public hearing and that being the case um, I would like to make a statement um, I've been a public service in this a public servant for this town for 21 years I was hired in 1994 as a programmer analyst, and I converted the lien records, the delinquent taxes, into liens 
and ran, automated the process to run foreclosures with the previous receiver, Marie Galliardi. I'm now in my fourth term as the elected receiver of taxes and ser serving my third, completing my 13th year. During these past 21 years, I've worked for five supervisors, William Burton, John Trevokas, <laughs> Martha Dodge, Catherine Borgia, and Sue Donnelly. During 20 of those 21 years, we were able to provide what I believe was exceptional public service in the tax office. We were able to serve the public who came into the office to pay or to get have questions answered. We took their phone calls. We provided the documentation that they required when they called us for help with a problem. Uh, or even problems that weren't related to taxes. After 20 years of operating the office with two deputy receivers, supplemented by part-time help at the seasonal time, times of year when tax collection became very heavy, which is the end of April, the end of January, the end of September, and the end of December. In late 2013, the supervisor proposed and the board agreed to a budget that made decisions that appear to many people in our town to be intended to significantly decrease and diminish the services that my office provides to the public. I'd like to identify those items and I'd like the board to consider because at this point there are some changes in the budget but they have not, according to um, my latest discussion with Maddie, uh, these issues have not really been addressed. The first decision was to eliminate one of the deputy receivers in, in my office. This has now left the office at times in a situation where no one is present to handle questions. When one person is on vacation, as happened last month, and another goes to lunch. There was no one there to answer questions, and the office has to be closed to the public. This has happened on more than one occasion throughout the year. We leave a sign on the door that says, please seek the assessment tax aid in the assessor's office, but that doesn't always work if the assessment tax aid isn't in. Excuse me, can we help you? Yeah, uh, please go and sit in the audience. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Isn't the front door unlocked? Uh, locked. It was locked? I thought. Yeah. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I in the say, front? I thought, I, <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought I heard a knocking, but I. Um, two deputies who were in my office last year both retired. And one of those positions was replaced by a part time assessment tax aid who is in the tax office half the time, but in the assessor's office the other half. <clears throat> so we've gone back and forth as to whose office is docked for vacation time and whose office gets docked when she wants to take a course in Excel and when she can schedule that course in Excel, which would benefit both offices, but comes out of the time when one of us might be shorthanded. That sometimes leaves, leaves the tax office uncovered during lunch periods and other times when both the receiver and the deputy must be absent. And also at times when we all go for training, which happens once a month when we go to the tax receivers meetings. The second decision, originally made in 2012, was to completely eliminate the part-time seasonal employees who came in to work at the end of the months of January, April, September, and December when tax collections are heavy. There are no trained people now that I can call upon to come in to cover the office because one of the people that I used to call on is now my deputy, and the others have found other employment because they weren't coming in at all. So I lost two people to other employment, and one I've hired full-time. 
You can't train someone unless you're in the office with them to train them. That means that I would really need to have a person come in so I could train a person to have them available. But at this point, I can't get a person in because it's been denied to have an, a person come in when the office is going to be empty. And instead, I've been told by email, put a sign on my door, and people have been sent to the village to pay town taxes there. I might like to add that that violates the uh, bond, the undertaking that is to protect the town and that protects me. And if a person is paying taxes in another office, they're not covered. Those, they're not covered by the bond. The third decision the board made in 2013 was the refusal to fund one piece of software that would electronically copy checks at 550 per minute and a second piece of software that would provide us with an image cash letter which enable, would enable us to electronically deposit checks to our bank account on the same day as received and posted. We wouldn't have to stamp the back of every check, we wouldn't have to prepare a deposit slip, and we wouldn't have to prepare a courier bag. We wouldn't have to have hired a car or have the courier come. Not only would this software have speeded up operations, but furthermore, it would have provided more security because our agreement with the courier service, with the bank courier, doesn't cover checks. It only covers the reconstruction of a deposit. What that means is they would cover the cash. If they lost a deposit, they would cover the cash. But the checks would not be. Only the cost of reconstructing. They require us to have a copy of every check, and then they would treat those copies as checks and deposit them the way an image cash letter is deposited. So having those copies at 550 a minute, it would be a big gain for us because you can't stand in the public area of my office making copies of checks three at a time, especially since we don't have that extra person at the end of the month and we've had lines, which we hardly ever had before. But now we have lines into the hallway because we can't process fast enough. Also, by eliminating the person who came in, we've also had an issue, which I discussed just this last week with the auditors, because we were not able to get the checks posted and deposited within 24 hours. When the extra person came in, sometimes that person would just post checks so that we could handle the public service aspect. And the posting has to be done and the checks deposited according to this, the uh, state law, receivers responsible for getting that money in within 24 hours. We were not able to do that. What we had to do was to hold back postmarked, post -date, uh, postmarked checks in the envelopes and post those after the fact. And since the third person, the part-time tax aid, was then working in the um, assessor's office, it left my deputy and I to try to get the rest of the deposits in. This also slowed down the school district getting their money because we pay them on the fifth of the month for the money that comes in by the end of the month. And since we weren't able to get all of that money in by the end of the month, they didn't get that payment. So the repercussions are not just here in the town, but the repercussions are felt elsewhere. The fourth decision that the supervisor and the board made in 2013, which was meant to deliberately deli diminish not only the service that the office provides, but also the stature of the office, was to slash the receiver's salary by 45%. That brought the salary down below the level it was 18 years ago when Marie Galliardi was the receiver. The amount proposed originally in this year's budget left it well below what it was when I took office. 
Now, I understand that there's been some movement in that. However, the figure that I was given still leaves it below the amount in 2006, eight years ago. A picture is worth a thousand words. I have a chart that I would like to, may I bring this up? What, is it, what does it say on it? If you just give it to the clerk, okay? It's yes, please. I'd like to hold this up because with a view toward transparency, I'd like the public to be able to see this. From 2002, as the salaries all trended together in 2013, at the end of the year, when they were set, they dropped two of them. This red line right here is the receivers, and this is the superintendent of highways. I'd also like it on the record that I'm the enforcing officer. I enforce delinquent taxes. I run the foreclosures. I run the auctions. Um, this year, the auction uh, should realize more than half a million dollars. And what I'm asking the board to do is to please consider the fact that I'm a professional in this field, that the salary that has been set is still below that of highway super, the, the highway um, road crews, that mechanics are earning more, that I'm bringing in the revenue for the town, I'm running the foreclosures, and that the, um, that the amount of work involved has not diminished at all. It has increased considerably because we are now shorthanded. So not only have you diminished the salary, you've totally increased the workload by eliminating the seasonal people and, the, and the, um, making the deputy position part-time. So I'm asking the board, I just have a question. Since you've got the budget on there as a resolution, Will you be discussing these issues prior to the vote? You already made this statement, and uh, the board has discussed your from the last time. Whether you call it a public hearing the last time or not, you made your comments, we discussed your comments, and we're moving forward tonight. But those comments on the budget, were they made public so that the public could hear the discussion? Absolutely. You're on camera. You're on YouTube. You're on video. You're on television. You're all over for town. my comments. But has the public been able to hear your thoughts? We discussed it in detail at a work session, yes, Gloria. It's twice already. So thank you for your comment, though. I don't mean at an executive session. I wasn't in, it wasn't in an executive session. So I would like to ask the board to restore the deputy position or a full-time position. Um, the person could sit in my room and still work on assessment work if that is necessary however we need somebody in the room to help answer phones I would like the board to fund the software that I requested and I would like the board to restore the salary thank, thank you. you thank you for your comments is there anyone else who's come to address the board on this budget here? on the budget yes John Um, I simply wanted to ask a few questions regarding the... Your name uh, and address, John. Uh, excuse me. My name is John Van Steen. I live at 78 South Highland Avenue Thank here you. in Austin, New York. And at the uh, November 25th board meeting, I gave a presentation on specific line items on the budget. Um, I noticed that those minutes are here for approval. 
as an agenda right. item later on uh, are all of the comments that were made on They that? are. And you you no, stepped no. in a few minutes late, but uh, what we were telling people is that everything was done cor correctly as to posting and uh, for the public hearing, and uh, but the Journal News did not publish it. So we decided to have a second one here, but we classified the first one as a, a your comments were taken into consideration and discussed. So. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome, sir. Hi, Jerry Wonderlick, North Water Street, Austin, New York. Um, you, know, you gotta know, uh, slashing somebody's salary by 40% is unprecedented. I've never heard about this in, in any business I've ever been in, and it's, it's, it's just beyond the pale. Uh, so I've got, I, I really think you should uh, return those salaries back to where, where they were. Uh, these are professionals. Uh, and so I would like to read a statement I note that on December 31st, 2013, at approximately 9.30 a.m., the town board attended an unscheduled meeting which has no notice or was... I'm sorry, it was noticed, sir. Well... I will correct you when you, um, you are incorrect. Me, uh, in which no notice was publicly posted as the law required, that the public was not notified of the said meeting and that no member of the public, much less the two subjects of this vengeful slashing of salaries, had an opportunity to speak contrary to public law. Further, it is indicated that the meeting lasted a full seven minutes, so clearly a lively discussion did not take place. As I understand it, at no time did any member of the Board of Trustees have a face-to-face -face meeting with either Gloria Freed or Michael O'Connor, both, like you, elected officials. It shows, a lack of it shows a lack of professional courtesy to the members of the Town of Austin, who, quite frankly, are highly qualified. It is clear that the capricious, capricious and retaliatory reducing of the salaries of the two duly elected Town officials Michael O'Connor and Lawyer Freed appears to be based solely on political vengeance and is meant for personal and political punishment. It is very <laughs> clear to me, as well as others, that the current board is making a huge mistake and it very well may have a, a legal impact coming down the road. Uh, the budget must be rejected until such time that it is properly amended so that the full salaries of both this collector of taxes and the superintendent of highways are fully restored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Mr. Do you want to clarify that the uh, meeting was properly posted and um, we'll leave it at that. Mr. Wonderlook, if you have a written statement, might I have it please? If you have a written statement, might I have it? Okay. Madam Clerk. Do we have anybody else who wants it? For the, okay, might I have a motion to close this public hearing? Uh, so moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we'll move on to announcements. Is there any announcements? Okay. Yes. Uh, the clerk's office, and I will repeat what I repeated twice already, sem semi, that uh, about the public hearing tonight. The clerk's office and administration followed the law as far as posting the public hearing for the budget. This, this administration goes out of its way to make this government as transparent as possible. The Journal News did not publish the announcement, uh, so not to have any questions, we called for another public hearing, which we are having this evening. We will be discussing at the work session next Tuesday about changing the newspaper for posting our, lo our legal notices. This administration, this administration is very proud of this budget and many hours of preparation that has gone into producing a budget. And again, I want to thank Maddie, Tom, and Dale for, and their staff for the, in the financial office for the great job they have done. Tonight we will be voting on the 2015 budget as well as approving other resolutions for the Recreation IMA including the lease for, to rent space in the senior nutrition program at the community center from the village. This IMA itself took a tremendous amount of time and effort on everyone's part and we are again proud that we can offer the residents of the unincorporated area benefits that were not available in the past. There will be a discussion on some changes, um, on trans, on some changes to the budget. In the town court, we are moving some of the money from the part-time line to the security line. Uh, the assessor's office, we need to scan in some extremely old maps and we're doing it at a very reduced price. We're very happy with that. Uh, the tax receiver's uh, salary will increase and uh, we are adding two more um, onto our insurance, one family plan and one individual. 
based on the rates we get, the difference um, besides the con after the contributions by the uh, employees, the difference will be $16,280 for the family and $8,212 uh, $8, for the individual. Adding one request to the dental plan, which is about $1,300. And the salary of the highway superintendent has been increased. In order to accomplish these changes and have no tax increase levy, we have moved funds from the lines that we have gotten, uh, since we have gotten accurate numbers in the fund of 20 fund, 31 fund, and 41 fund, a uh, 45, excuse me, fund, because our estimates of our, um, what was it, retirement, was, were too high. We're high. We're a bit high. Well, we're glad we'd rather be high than when we get the actual numbers in and be lower. As far as the general fund, we will take $25,000 out of fund balance and 11000 um, um, we'll take $25,000 out of fund balance and $11,956 from the general fund retirement expense because we had budgeted it higher than it actually came in. Okay, uh, we have accepted the registr uh, registr reg uh, resignation of George Weeks as planning board chair. Again, we thank George for his 30 years plus for dedication to this community. There will be a planning board meeting tomorrow night with only one item on the agenda. It will be the Woods of Westchester on Croton Dam Road and Hawks Avenue, and it will, they are looking for a site plan amendment to their wetlands permit. Uh, we will also be voting on the minutes and paying our bills, along with some budget adjustments and our monthly reports. That's what I have so far. If anybody, if anyone on the board would like to comment on the budget, we will wait till we do the budget, uh, the budget resolution. Madam Clerk. on any of the agenda items. John? Uh, my name, once again, is John Van Steen. I live at 78 South Highland Avenue, Austin, New York. Uh, I noticed that on item I of the agenda that the amount in the board resolution um, is different from the, uh, well, the amount of 5,377, I'm sorry, 5,377,191 in the board, in board resolution I is different from the town general amount of 5,352,191 in the 2015 tentative budget. Can you explain the difference? Well, well remember it's a tentative budget, right? Good. So these are the, uh, what I just read you before, those numbers that I read you that were taking $25,000 out of fund balance and stuff, that is uh, the difference. So it's the difference between the tentative budget, which is what you do the public hearing on, and the final budget. Okay. And I, I know I read them quickly, but they'll also be on the written uh, minutes and they'll also be on TV, you know, of those numbers. So that was to do an increase in salary as it was agreed upon by, um, uh, was determined by most of the board members and uh, to uh, uh, change some of those other items such as, okay, you know, that, scanning and, in the maps and stuff. And that increase in salary that you mentioned was for? There was a slight increase for Mr. O'Connor and there was an increase for Gloria Freed. Okay. And how much was the increase for Mr. O'Connor? I can tell you. Uh, he will, his salary for next year will be $83,048 and for Tax, um, the tax receiver will be $70,556. Okay. So I have a few numbers incorrect because of the adjustments to... Um, okay. Oh, oh, you mean because you were going off the tentative budget. I, 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 I was going off the tentative budget figures, mm -hmm. and I had understood that there was an increase of some type in there for um, the receiver of taxes, mm -hmm. but I have... Um, a proposal to put before the board, and I believe it would be a good idea for board members to support it, that um, as far as the approval of the 2015 budget is concerned, uh, be it resolved that the town board of Austin. No, whoa, 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 whoa. What is your suggestion? My suggestion is to put <laughs> a proposal before the board that would reflect the budget, that would fully restore the salaries of the superintendent of highways and the receiver of taxes to their 2013 levels plus 2% per year increase that all of the other 
uh, town employees have received over the subsequent two-year period. Well, thank you for your suggestion. Um, and you, if you want to give your your paper to the clerk, we can take it there. Okay. And copies for everyone. If you All right, fine. <laughs> and other than that, um, I I uh, 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 I would propose that the board would vote no on the budget as it is currently proposed. Thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else? Not seeing anyone. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the November 25th, 2014 minutes of the regular meeting as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolved the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the December 2nd, 2014 minutes of a special meeting as presented. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Which one was the, I'm sorry, I don't remember the special meeting. Which one was that? That was to call for the second public hearing. Oh, wow. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the voucher detail report dated December 9th, 2014 in the amount of $324,337.37. Do I have a motion? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby makes the following budget adjustments to the 2014 adopted budget. And you can see it's a total of $224,010.98. Do I have a motion? Move. Second. I just want to point out that a lot of these are on judgments and uh, it's moving the money for the judgment and claims into the correct line. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved the town board of the town of Austin hereby appoints Jeffrey Sutton, Austin, to the probationary position of part time chauffeur in the senior nutrition department at an hourly rate of $12, effective December 4th, 2014. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved the town board of the town of Austin hereby authorizes the supervisor to execute an intermunicipal agreement with the village of Austin with a term effective January 1st, 2015 through December 31st, 2015 for the village to provide recreation programming and town park rental administration for the town in accordance with said IMA subject to the approval of the town attorney. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved the town board of the town of Austin hereby authorizes the supervisor to execute an intermunicipal agreement with the village of Austin with a term effective January 1st, 2015 through December 31st, 2015 for the town to pay for the space within the Joseph G. Caputo Center utilized by the Senior Nutrition Program in accordance with said IMA, subject to the approval of the town attorney. Do I have a motion? No. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved the town board of the town of Austin hereby accepts with regret the resignation of the town planning board chair George Weeks effective December 1st, 2014. Do I have a motion? Moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the 2015 budget for the town of Austin. Total appropriations for the 2015 entire town, 10 fund, are $5,377,191. Total appropriations for the unincorporated 20 area fund are $3,707,576 and total appropriations for the highway 31 fund are $2,281,724. Do I 
Total appropriations for the water and sewer funds are $569,076. Total appropriations for the fire light refuge funds are $1,282,378. Total appropriations for the ambulance districts are $612,981. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, uh, Councilwoman Jeffrey, do you have a comment? Um, yes. Um, I appreciate the hard work that goes into these uh, budget numbers, and um, I do thank all those who worked on it, Maddie and um, Tom and, and Dale and and the supervisor for putting forth this. But um, I was not on the board in 2013. I had nothing to do with the decision making having to do with the budget. Um, fast forward to now, um, I cannot vote for a budget that is going to not restore the salaries of two of the people who are professionals and have given service and been elected year after year uh, by the will of the people um, to do these jobs. I, I and many people in the entire town of Ossining believe that uh, the superintendent of highways, Michael G. O'Connor, as well as the receiver of taxes, Gloria Free, do an outstanding job. Um, and we thank them for that job. And I believe that they should be uh, adequately paid for that job. And um, I also have stated out loud and to this date that to reduce professional people um, and elected officials' salaries the way it was done, how much it was done, I cannot abide by, I don't agree with. Uh, I would like this board, I have asked this board, I would like this board to reconsider to restoring it to the full amount of the uh, previous amount before it was uh, um, um, reduced. Um, um, and that, those would be the ov overriding issues that I have. I am concerned that there is some, uh, there seems to be that every time there's an opening in one of those particular um, offices, there are changes of reduction. There's no problem with um, being, um, doing more with less when you need to, being efficient in jobs and saving costs when you can, that, that I think is prudent. Sometimes it goes to the other way and we slash too quickly and it, not, it is not always helpful or provide the services that we're used to. So I, I'm happy as we've discussed to um, see how it works with the um, administrator and the superintendent of highways office going to part time. I am concerned about that. I am concerned about how that job is going to be done. I'm concerned about how we at the town board will find out whether it's working or not. Um, and that, you know, before we find out it's going to be something that ends up being negative. So I have concerns about it. Um, with respect to the, su the receiver of taxes, um, I think that we have discussed a way that we can get some um, support. Uh, I think, Madam Supervisor, you might speak to that. Um, so I have hope that there is some part of support. And we've also spoken about providing funds for, um, or, you know, technical aspects, but with the overall issues and deficiencies as I see it in this budget, I am not going to be able to vote for it. I may. The Town of Austin's proposed budget for 2015 fails to restore the money necessary to fund the full salary increase to Michael G. O'Connor, Highway Superintendent, as requested in his departmental budget or the full salary increase to Mrs. Gloria Freed, receiver of taxes, as requested in her departmental budget. 
I believe that Mr. O'Connor and Mrs. Freed are deserving of the salary increase re uh, of the, these salary increase restorations. Consequently, I will not vote to approve the 2015 proposed budget unless funds can be restored for these full salary increases, in which case I would then vote for the approval. Thank you. Thank you. I just would like to um, point out uh, that I wanted to thank our uh, our the budget committee. I don't know. <laughs> I know this is a collaborative effort on the part of uh, many people, and it's a, um, a very detailed budget. And after several meetings and review and turning of lots of pages and several late nights, and uh, I think that. The budget is a remarkable example of how this town and the town board has figured out a way to do more with less. And we've been saying that we'd be able to do that um, since I joined the board. And that's always a goal, but you don't know if you're going to be able to pull it off. And um, you know, the dollar is stretched thin. A lot of municipalities are feeling that, and a lot of businesses are feeling that. And I just think that uh, through a very methodical implementation of a plan that is designed around the people, around the taxpayers, and not uh, elected officials, and not uh, personal agendas, but about the taxpayers, and uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with the, the outcome of this budget. And um, just to speak to uh, um, particular uh, issues that are coming up here tonight, and I'm disappointed that my uh, colleagues are um, uh, unwilling to vote in favor of the budget as it stands. I, um, I believe that uh, salary for any employee is not a matter of entitlement. I believe it's a matter of of performance and um, at the time that uh, that we were presented with facts a couple of years ago um, I have to say and I won't give specifics because I'm not here to throw anybody under the bus but to comment on a budget and as far as I was concerned uh, performance reports that I received at the time uh, were very strongly indicative, in my opinion, of individuals who were not living up to the perform minimum performance standards uh, for the salaries that they were being paid. And given that this board has the power of the purse, uh, we are um, under an obligation to our taxpayers required to spend money uh, efficiently and appropriately. And I don't believe that an employee who's not doing their job, in my opinion, uh, has the right to demand the same salary just because it goes up and everyone else's goes up. Um, in my personal opinion, uh, in the private sector, which of course we're not at, but um, some people lose their jobs when their employers believe that they are underperforming. So, in contrast to the public, in contrast to the private sector, in the public sector, um, I understand it doesn't necessarily work that way, especially if you have elected officials. But that doesn't mean that a board is held hostage to the status quo just because um, individuals believe that because they've always gotten what they've gotten. That, uh, that their performance is not be taken into account. I disagree. And I'm very pleased that the reports that we've been receiving this year show that performance has improved. And in my opinion, that is testament to the appropriateness of the steps that we've taken to address deficiencies that were, that were uh, at hand a couple of years ago. And I would expect with continued performance 
improvements that there would be complete quote unquote restoration I don't believe in the term restoration but I'm employing it here because it seems to be a popular phrase I don't think you restore uh, a salary just for the sake of you know checking a box and that's not what's in, going on here in my opinion people are being rewarded for good work and I hope that we are able in the future to continue to reward good work and I am 100 percent in favor of this budget and um, very pleased uh, madam supervisor with the work of this board in general uh, that um, it has allowed us to minimize expenses and to increase and improve the level of service to our taxpayers thank you uh, madam supervisor I, I think I better can you hear Tom? okay I'll, I'll just say I don't I'm, I don't have a lot to say, but uh, work very hard on this budget have you no know, everybody's saying so the salary written nobody's asking why errors were taken away nobody is until the until the money is missing and you don't have it and, and then the work is not being performed then somebody will come up with an idea but the only thing I'm trying to say here is like I, I, I don't need your answer. excuse me excuse me we've had our time to talk this is a board meeting. This is not something that we yell from the audience, please. I think what... Excuse me. I, I, Northern is speaking. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. I, I now, was going to... What, I, what I'm part. trying to say is this is not uh, 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 he say, she say, or uh, he does and she doesn't. Uh, the highway super, Mr. Kendrick, I was on the board with you. I know how you used to, not on my dime, <laughs> I, all these things you used to do, that was when you were on this side. Now you're on the other side. I know not, <laughs> not all, all, all peaches and cream, but the thing being is you, when, when we tried to get attention, and I remember many times that we could not get your attention. This was the only way to get it. And but the only thing I'm trying to say is, we, as the board sat, here, we sit here, and we put some long nights and days in trying to do what's right. But we, we can't always do it all for everybody. Now I have I, I I made my vote. I voted on what I thought was good, and if it's not good. And we, I'll have to live with it, and so will you. But the thing is, we need to respect what each other say. Uh, not necessarily what we say, but you have to respect each other's position. And you know, and it's not always just because I'm the superintendent or I'm the tax collector. We we, we are people. We have to respect each other. I think once we lose that respect, we're not we're not going to get very far. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, I'd like to. Uh, no, I, you you had I to, think I excuse can. Excuse me. I think I can. Excuse me. You I, had your time to talk. I think I can say something. Yeah, but no one commented. No one commented on your little uh, talk. Sue, I think I, uh, so Madam Supervisor, I think I get to speak if I want to speak. This is a conversation we can have. It. Go ahead. It's just. I will say two things. Talk about disrespect. But I ahead. don't think it's disrespectful. It is. I think one thing to be clarified is there was a, con a question from a, uh, some constituents with respect to the reasoning behind the, uh, the reduction in salary and we were informed by the town attorney not to discuss in one uh, instance the reasoning behind the reduction due to pending litigation. That's a statement. So there has been some questions we, and, and we were informed not to. That's the first thing. The second thing I just wanted to say is this is how it becomes difficult when boards 
go into reducing salaries of elected officials because who's fat? And and I excuse me, and, and you you were not on the board last year. No, I wasn't. Okay? That's I'm number one. Number two, I, okay, you ha you can go back and look at all the records. You can go back and look at, they could go back and look at all the meetings, and some of this was discussed in pu public, but you don't discuss personnel in public, okay? I understand so. that, and I'm saying that when, so to utilize the verbiage of facts in terms of, I think it's really some subjective, and so that's well, where that's, the again, difficulty Well, that's, again, your, that is your opinion. It is my opinion. Okay, and no one, opinion. no one is backlashing on you like you tried to backlash on Council Member I'm Wilshire. I'll make the final comment on this and then we'll take a vote, Madam I, I, Clerk. You don't get to just make statements Excuse that me. are incorrect. And I nor do you, ma'am. Nor do you. I was not, I was not backlashing. I was clarifying one particular portion of statement. It is that time that we, we came to a conclusion that we can no longer do business as usual. We simply ask every employee of the town of Austin, whether they are elected, appointed, or in one of our two unions, to do their job as they would have to do in, pr in public uh, sector, in private sector, excuse me. None of the changes this year, as far as other items besides these two that seem to be monopolizing this discussion, none of the changes made this year were surprises. If we have, uh, we discuss at great lengths the opportunities for everyone within the organization through a series of meetings and bringing the parties together. We, ob we observe all departments we know when there is right uh, staffing in departments and when there's not. Um, if people choose to work together, they can. If people choose to work a little bit more with a uh, little harder with a little bit less, they can. And if they don't, then so be it. Madam Clerk, vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excuse All me. All those opposed? Aye. No. Yeah. No, I am not sure which how we do this. No. We have no correspondence to be received and filed. We nope. do have monthly reports. Resolve the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby accepts the following monthly reports for the month of November 2014 from Supervisor's Office, Town Clerk's Office, GE Helicopter Report, and the Town Building Department. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That moves us into visitor recognition. Is there anyone who's come to address the board? Michael? Uh, Michael G. O'Connor, Superintendent of Highways, Town of Austin. Uh, I'm not looking to elicit a, a response, but to make a statement to comments made here that uh, my duties are being measured by a yardstick that I don't know what it is. I don't know the yardstick that was used to measure me for the reduction. Nothing was presented to me. Oh, excuse me, Michael. No, no. Excuse me. We met for two years. Two years. And, and this was told, this two years of meetings is, uh, was now considered a reflection of my duties. That was never told to me, that you were going to take two years of meetings and everything else. Uh, the duties and responsibilities of a superintendent of highways are outlined in town law, state of New York. There's manuals in my office. Uh, there is supposed to be a cooperative re agreement between the town board and the superintendent of highways. One of the agreements, are particularly, is spelled out in quite detail, and that is the paving of roads. No road can be paved without a particular form filled out with all everybody's signature on it, all six people. So that uh, failure to do that on the part of the highway superintendent could result in uh, uh, the highway superintendent actually being made to pay for that road work. So it has to be all legally performed. Other than that, all other expenses that are done in the budget um, are done through um, the budget itself. But there are many, although the budget has titles for many sections, uh, there are things that are not in a title, such as street signs, stop signs, speed limit signs. There's, there's no category for that, so we just 
get it where we can. But to say that uh, I'm doing better than I was doing the last time and everything else, um, uh, I don't know how that, that yardstick is done. And I'm not here to elicit a response. I'm just making a statement. I have no clue. Uh, and I'm trying to do my best. When I mark up my hours at the end of a year, because the highway superintendent is paid for a seven hour day, and I add all the hours that I work, I exceed the number of hours in a year as if I worked only seven hours a day and never took a sick day, never took a vacation day, never took a personal day, never took a bereavement day. Every year I exceed the hours. Yes, I take vacation time. And yes, you take sick. Like, and and yes. We hope you, but, you know, when you're sick, I, we hope but, you stay But home. when I'm there, I work more hours to cover all that time. And I have. And the fact that um, I am perceived or was perceived as to being unresponsive or whatever, because the duties are outlined under state law, under highway law. And what my job is to come in and present a budget, talk about the operational requirements of the town, and give you a budget. Your, the boards, any board in the state of New York, then has to decide whether or not they're going to meet those requests. And that's your fiduciary responsibility. Why you do that, that's totally up to you. But it's, I just find it interesting that I'm being told now that there's a yardstick being applied to me that says that I'm doing better than I was. Well, you even list. understand that, Michael. You're well, much more cooperative. You're more working with the team. I, I you know. always have. I've always been willing to do this. And uh, in the face of, of a lot of things that, and, and I have. And uh, it's uh, it's fine. It's fine. I find it hard to thank you, Michael. Accept some of the statements made. Thank, thank you, you very much, uh, Michael G. Thank you very much for your for your comments. Um, I know that it must be difficult to do this in a public forum. From your your standpoint, it's difficult to do this in a public forum. From my standpoint, um, I just as soon have a conversation. Uh, uh, behind closed doors, but that's not the way the public sector works, and uh, therefore I, I'm sorry that this plays out on camera. Um, but um, I had heard some very troubling things, and I'm not here to to, to do this in public, and I won't. But um, aren't we all measured by a yardstick and? I don't, I don't know how you could possibly stand up at that podium and say you don't know. It's, it's just not even believable. Not believable. You can't, you can't stand up there and say that. We've, we had numerous meetings. We had numerous discussions and conversations. Um, and I just can't believe I, I, I watched you say that. It's just not, not true. Sorry. Once again, Gloria Free, 22 Ryder Road. I would like to comment on what I just heard. Mr. Blaha, I have worked in the private sector. And in the private sector, there is enough respect for individuals that when there is a problem, the problem is discussed and noted in the personnel file. And there are three attempts that have to be noted. I was a manager, and I had to learn this so that I could supervise my group, my programming group. And I was a manager of computer services for a company that earned much more money than this town budget. And I earned much more money than I ever earned here. And I chose to come here and to work here because of my commitment to the public. 
when you have a problem with an individual and you have three meetings and they understand they are given three attempts to correct I would like to tell you and the public that on October 30th last year I received a letter totally out of the blue that said and it was from the budget director or the budget officer saying that based upon quote an analysis of the work performed and the duties deemed necessary by the board the salary for the receiver of taxes will be reduced to fifty thousand dollars and that is from 87 plus that letter came four days before the election where you commit to run for a position in May have petitions in June campaign and get elected in November and suddenly four days before the election find out that the salary is being slashed 43 45 percent that's the yardstick the duty is deemed necessary by the yardstick Gloria was your attendance I, at in I, I, the office are not finished and it's my turn to speak oh, so madam sorry. supervisor I asked that's the yardstick I asked for the analysis of the job performed and the duties deemed necessary by the board because there was not one thing in my employee file that identified any problem whatsoever I handed in weekly attendance sheets and there was not one comment made to me there was not one email not one memo anywhere that identified any issue when was the last time excuse you turned me. an attendance sheet this year excuse me I'd like I'm to know still that. speaking I requested the analysis of the work performed and the duties deemed necessary by the board and I requested that in a freedom of information request and the response I got it was denied and it was denied because the documents I requested did not exist that was a denial and that's a formal denial of the information I requested what are the duties deemed necessary but, but that you're just misstating the because law. <laughs> because mr. Blaha the duties of my job are proclaimed under state law under real property tax law and under town law and under the Westchester County Code but I go above and beyond those duties because I was hired first as a programmer analyst for eight years for the town and I did conversions and enforcement and I did those after becoming receiver at no additional salary there is no reason other than what I learned later is that I refused to sign the supervisor's pledge of dedicated service and that's one of the reasons I was told later on was the problem now I put my hand on a Bible on January 1st and I took an oath of office Legging before the public on TV with my hand on a Bible before God and I took a pledge to uphold the laws of the state of New York and the laws of this community and I do that to the best of my ability and I have done that for 13 years as receiver there's been no change there's been no change this year over last year over the year before the one change last year is that I was I was caring for an ill sister and she died in December and I did take bereavement and I believe um. I'm being charged <laughs> for um, that is so time that, that is I have so to take off that is but so I counted unkind. every single one of those days was counted on my attendance sheets and nobody challenged any of them when I was handing them in 
So I agree with Mr. O'Connor. There is no yardstick. The yardstick is not within this town. The yardstick to measure us as elected officials is in the other towns and in the other, the other receivers. What are they earning and what are they doing to earn that? And what are, what are the other highway superintendents doing and what are they earning? Because that's where you see the yardstick. And you have got no liens in this town older than 2013. And I don't think you really appreciate what that means. Because you should look at Greenberg. You should look at Cortland. You should look at other towns and compare what you've got here. Because to say, to say that the job wasn't being done is a fallacy. And the only information you had was coming from one source. It wasn't coming. You never, you never asked me. You never met with me. You just said you would like to meet privately. I, I, I think encourage you were in Arizona that. both times that we were meeting. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank I, I, I'm not. Excuse me. What did you ask? I said I think you were in Arizona at the time we met. So that might be why we weren't there. I think you were on vacation during the budget discussions. Is that correct? I. I had a conference call. I had a 45-minute conference call, and I presented. Well, then why are you saying we didn't meet? We met. You and I did not meet. You were not. You were not there. Oh, you mean this year or last year? Of what are you talking about? You, I, I've asked you which conference, which meeting are you discussing? I, I maybe I misunderstood which one you were discussing. Well, you're talking about the entire year of 2013. I was available. Had, I'm had sorry. You, had you wanted to discuss anything, Mr. Wilcher, had you had any questions, I was there to answer questions for you. Mr. Harder, you attended the auction. You saw what I did. So I'm, I'm telling, I'm asking you, I got a letter saying that the duties deemed necessary by the board, an analysis of the job performed, but nobody really came to me and looked for the analysis. And nobody came to see what's the difference between Ossining and Greenberg? What's the difference between having millions of dollars of delinquent outstanding taxes and no complaints? Because there are no written complaints from anybody except for one person who couldn't spell tax receiver. So I never answered her email because I never got it. Gloria. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, here, I'm here to tell you that you talk about respect, but you did not show respect to the elected officials who were elected with more votes than any of you. So I'm wondering how much politics really played a role in what your decision was, and how much politics controlled your decision and your pledge, your pledge of dedicated service, which you feel was more important than an oath with a body. Your oath of office told you you should go to work every day. And, right? and, and Madam Supervisor, and you were not at work. I was at work every day. Oh my God. And I have the emails at work. Oh my God. Show it. Enough. And, Enough. and <laughs> Madam Supervisor. That is such a fallacy. I, oh, my God. You have no records whatsoever. Because you write your own. You write and your you own. Never, what are the sheets called, And Maddie? you never. Attendance sheets. You have not turned in an attendance sheet this year ex since July. Since yes, July. Yes, have. And no, I never you have not turned in any attendance sheets And I never year. received anything from this board indicating, or last year's board, indicating a problem. <laughs> okay. Now, if, if you thought that my attendance was so bad, then there would have been a flood of people. I'm imploring the public to refute this, as I'm there <laughs> for you, and I have been there for you, and I will be there for you, regardless. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anyone else who would like to address the board? I guess just to comment what I've heard going back and forth 
these in these discussions. Eric, you mentioned that there is a parameter and is a metric by which the employees are measured. When let me let me answer that. When you're an elected official, okay, um, we do not we do not critique your attendance reports whether they're true or not true. They are signed by the elected official, okay. We do not check them. We do not have elected officials punch in time clocks. We do not do any of those things. If someone writes that they were in the office for seven hours, whether they were there or not, it is not our job. We don't have that, we can't even do it. We don't have that responsibility to, to ask them for the difference. The, the, simple, the simple fact of coming to work and being there when your office is opened and serving the public is all we asked. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that because I am not going to, you and, know. But, but, but in the discussions here, and Mr. Blaha, I believe that you specifically referred to a measure that you have to measure the performance of your supervisors, and that was used by this board to measure their performance. It, he, so, and, and so. You, you took it out of context. I, yeah, and you're taking it out of context. context. Am I incorrect in this? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're so, incorrect. So, okay, so, so then what you're saying is that there is no metric that you really have as far as how to judge an employee's performances, an employee's aura. You, are you an employer? Not currently, no. Okay. Have you ever been an employer? I have been an employer. Okay. How do you judge and gauge the performance of, of employees? You gauge the, the and judge the import, the It's performance, performance isn't the, it? Yes. Performance. Yes. There you go. That's the that's the uh, the measuring stick. Okay. And so and so, generally, as far as this use of performance is concerned, there are specific metrics that you're looking for to be able to judge the performance. And these metrics in the private industry that you mentioned are frequently in writing, so that an employee has the ability to know what he is going to be judged on. So I would assume that the town board has a metric system such as this that is in writing. Not for an elected official, sir. Understand do something. For, do the, only, the only control over an elected official is, uh, that the town board has is the budget. We expect people to come to work, do their job, perform efficiently, and, and, and go home at the end of the day. Okay. Do you have a performance metric for a non-elected official? At this particular time, we have so few department managers ourselves that uh, we, do, we do not have anything written. We do not have an evaluation, written do evaluation. Have an evaluation for, we, do you have an evaluation form for employees of the, of the town? We are, we are a total union shop, sir. Okay. So <laughs> within that union shop, is there an evaluation form? No. So, so if essentially what I'm hearing, though, is Please don't take things out of context and then elaborate on them either. So, okay? But what I'm hearing is that there is no performance metric that you have. Uh, coming to work, doing your job, and being available for the public right. is, a, is, a, is a standard operating procedure. All right? And that's what we asked. We asked people to work with the team be a team member, work with the other departments, not liberally go out and do whatever they want to do. We have very little control over elected officials. Understood. So, and to be honest with you, and I was talking to someone today about this, we are not going to sit here and bat back and forth issues and criticisms and stuff like that. It's inappropriate in this setting. So I thank you, and if you, unless you have another comment. No, I, 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 bl I believe that the board heard and understood my comments Absolutely. at the previous meeting. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Thanks. Is there anyone else? I was confused about the vote on the budget, and I would like it to re uh, It's voted. a 3 2 vote, sir. To me? It's a 3 2 vote. Has it been recorded? Yes, yes sir. Okay. on to an adjournment to executive session for legal advice. Legal advice, uh, yeah, legal advice. Right. Motion to adjourn to executive session for legal advice. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good night and have a great week.